Just like when you're shopping for shoes to make sure that they fit your feet, you need to take the exact same approach when you're shopping for a handgun to fit your hand. So today we're going to spend some time talking about getting the proper fit so you've got something comfortable to shoot and also something comfortable to train with. Thanks for joining us on Shoot of the Series. My name is Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training, and we want to thank all of our followers for sticking with us, uh, helping us get traction, and keeping everything moving. Uh, if you haven't done it already, you can hit the like, hit the share, but also hit that bell for instant notification so you'll never miss a new episode. Uh, you can also find us on our other social media, including Patreon, as well as brand new to Parlor. So come find us, come check us out on the other platforms. Anyway, today we wanted to talk a little bit about the subject of getting the right fit for your hand and getting the right handgun for the purpose. If you'd imagine it, you know, every firearm is set up slightly different when it comes to ergonomics. And one size does not fit all. Imagine getting into your car and not being able to adjust the seat. It's very much like that. If you have trouble reaching the pedals, and your seat won't move, maybe you're in the wrong car. But the same principle applies to firearms. Now, we've already set up all of our pistols so that they're all safe and clear. And whenever we do a demonstration, uh, we pride ourselves on doing that for multiple reasons. First of all, YouTube will not allow us to do anything dangerous when it comes to unsafe gun handling. So we do that to preserve the channel and make sure that we're here to do safe videos to share with you. More importantly, we're here as an educational as well as a training channel. So we're here to educate and train and provide a proper example for what safe gun handling is. So it's there's no such thing as casual firearm safety. So we want to demonstrate safe every time we do this so that those for getting started will know exactly the do's and the don'ts and follow a good example and not follow people that set a poor example. All right, so getting started, we're gonna talk a little bit about getting the right fit for a firearm. Now, it's important to understand, like I said, that all the ergonomics are different. So you need to be able to establish what are the rules and what is the process for getting a good handgun to fit the first time. Now, we're gonna start off talking about my 1911, safe and clear. Now, 1911 is a great choice for a lot of people. Um, it's kind of on the larger side, but one of the things to consider is it's what's known as a single stack magazine. And a single stack means that it's got a fairly thin profile and the bullets stack one on top of the other in a straight line. So that would be known as a single stack. That's very important because if you've got smaller hands, you have less distance to try to reach around the grip. So because of that, if you've got smaller hands, a single stack is going to help um, accommodate the size of your hands. Um, in California, we have a round limit of 10. For some calibers, it doesn't make a difference. You can't carry more than 10 anyway, so a single stack is gonna carry less. It may not make the difference. Now. Another thing to consider about is the, is the layout for the controls. You're going to see that the controls are going to be in fairly consistent places. You're going to have your magazine release, which is going to be below your thumb. You're going to have your slide lock or slide release up above your thumb. And in many guns, you're going to have your safety to the rear. In a perfect world, and I'm going to hold it like this so you can see it, you should be able, or better yet like this, you should be able to reach your thumb and be able to use all of those controls. And you can see from the fact what I'm doing here, sometimes it's a stretch. So if for some reason the gun might be a little bit too large for you, one of the techniques that you can also do is use your left thumb. If you've already got a proper grip here, it's no big step to be able to turn your thumb 
and push the button here straight in or to use your slide lock straight up and down from here. So you can trade yourself if your thumb doesn't want to reach all the way. Very common, a lot of shooters are going to put their left hand to work when they're doing reloads and manipulations of the various controls. So that's the 1911. Now with the 1911, this is a single action, uh, semi-auto, and when you are locating your finger on the trigger, you want it to be on the center of the pad, not the crease. So what you want to be able to do, and I'm going to show it like this, is you should be easily be able to reach the trigger and have your pad right on the center without having to, to reach too far for it. Okay. I realize, you know, it's kind of hard to see all this stuff, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. Now, you're also going to find that there are some pistols out there that are known as a double stack. In this case, my CZ. Now, the double stack means that the rounds are going to alternate all the way to the top. Now, you may get a higher round count, but what happens, the benefit of the higher round count is the fact that you've also got a much wider magazine. And what that's going to translate to is having a wider grip, clear and safe with the CZ. So because you've got a wider grip, you're going to have a little bit more tough time if you've got, you know, smaller hands reaching your hand around the grip. The other thing is, is you need to be able with a double action uh, semi-auto is actually be able to reach it comfortably so that you can get the crease of your crease of your knuckle between the pads onto the double action trigger. Because in double action, you're going to be working from the crease rather than the pad. So if, if you have to struggle and you can only reach this far to get to the trigger, the CZ is not the gun for you. If you have trouble reaching a double action and getting your crease comfortably on the trigger, it's a no-go. Now, the way we determine on, on where your hand is going to be on the gun is you want to make sure it goes directly into the web of your hand. What you don't want to do is have it over the knuckle. If you have to shift the gun in your hand and have it over your knuckle, you're going to get a hot spot on the knuckle. So it needs to fit right directly in the web of your hand. And I'm going to turn here so that you can see that the, 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 the bore goes right directly up my arm. What you don't want is having it twisted like so. If it's over that knuckle, bad. Center of the web, good. All right. So there's things that you've got to take notice of when you're actually shopping for the gun. And the fit is much more important than the brand name. Don't get hung up on brand names. Um, there's a lot of good people that have great intentions when new shooters are asking for advice where uh, experienced shooters are going to say, you have to go get this, you have to go get that. Um, regardless of the brand name, they have good intentions, but that's something they're basing their experience on with their hand. What they need to take into consideration is the size of the new buyer's hand which means it's important that you don't just go buy a gun for somebody. You actually take them to the store so that they can get properly fitted. And, and it's happened more than once where I have had clients come up to the range where this exact same scenario has happened, where my boyfriend who's in the Army says, I have to get a Glock. So she went out and bought a Glock. Shows up to the range, can't reach the trigger. It might be good advice for someone with larger hands, but, you know, for the same reason that you wouldn't buy shoes without trying them on, you don't buy a gun without going hands-on either. So just take it a step at a time, go out and get fitted for yourself. Now, with that being said, the other things that we need to talk about is the weight of the gun. We also need to understand that if you have... A smaller pistol, um, say, you know, 
a smaller pistol with a shorter barrel, you're going to have more recoil. So we also have to determine if somebody is sensitive to recoil. Um, if they're sensitive to recoil, um, you need to let them know that a shorter barrel is going to have more recoil than, say, a longer barrel, like so. Because the size of the frame is larger, it's going to accept more of the energy and not transfer it to your hand, which would be felt recoil, because you've got a shorter or a longer barrel as opposed to a shorter barrel. And, and one of my pet peeves within the industry is that there are so many guns that are marketed to women that are small, lightweight, they might come in pink, purple, or Tiffany blue, and even though they're marketed to women, they're not always a very good choice. Just because they're small and lightweight means they're convenient to carry, but they're also going to be very punishing to shoot. So a heavier gun is going to be easier to control than a light gun. Now, another thing that we need to consider when you're actually going out and, and buying a pistol is whether or not you actually have the hand strength to operate it. Now, for instance, talking about the CZ again, for the most part, you know, average double action triggers come in at about 12 to 13 pounds. And if you're going to be able to operate one of these, you're going to have to have the hand strength to where you can manipulate the trigger over and over and over and over again. If you get tired manipulating the trigger, it's a sure sign that you're going to need to get something with a lighter trigger. Now, a good example of something with a lighter trigger that's going to be easier to shoot over a, a longer time would be something like the XD, safe and clear. The XD comes with a striker fired, and the striker fire only has about a five pound pull that you have to overcome, which is a lot easier to overcome than a 13 pound trigger. So for a lot of people with, with don't have the same hand strength, an XD might be a great choice. Now, while we're talking about the XD, I, I spend a lot of time fitting people for guns. Um, and, and as a result of that, we're able to see certain trends with, within the industry. And the XD happens to be one of the most comfortable guns with some of the best ergonomics that will fit the greatest amount of differences in hand size. They just came up on a winning formula to where this happens to be very, very comfortable in, a, in, in the widest range of size of hands. Um, it's also got a great balance of weight. One of the things that the XD has going for it to help tame, tame recoil is a dual spring system. It works on the recoil and the rebound. So felt recoil with the XD is, is, is very low and very manageable. Now, right up there with the XD, when it comes to overall ergonomics, there's my SIG, safe and clear. The SIG is also another great gun with great ergonomics that will allow the wide amount of hand sizes to fit it. Now, this right here is what's known as the SIG 2022, and it's a great bargain at around 600 bucks. Um, the, one of the beauties of the SIG, as well as many other types of firearms, is they come with adjustable grip panels, which means this grip panel will actually slide out and be replaced. You can get them in small, medium, and large. I just happen to keep the small on here because it fits the greatest amount of hands. Um, women seem to really like it, and men don't really seem to know the difference because they can just get more hand on it. So the SIG 2022, because it has uh, tailored grip panels, is also another really great choice for getting great fit. Another thing that I really like about the SIG, and you can see it from this side, is where the controls are mounted. Even if you've got a, sh even if you've got a short thumb and short fingers, because the way the controls are mounted, further to the rear, it's much easier to reach them than having to shift the grip in your hand. 
A um, lot of good things to be said about the SIG 2022. It's also lightweight, easy to carry, and if you compare the trigger pull to the other SIG relatives, like um, uh, other SIG 9mm, you're going to find that the trigger pull on the 2022 is a little bit less. The 226 and the 229 come in at about 13 pounds pressure. The 2022 comes in at about 10 and a half or 11. So for people that ha don't have the hand strength, it's going to be much easier to use a traditional double action like we have here over and over and over and over again because you've got a lighter spring in the trigger. So I know that we've got a lot here to cover, but wanted to let you guys know that there's a lot that goes in to picking the right pistol to get the right fit the first time. There's nothing worse than having to wait for a gun to, 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 to get in on an order, especially in these times. You could wait a, wait a month to get a gun, wait an additional 10 days to actually pick it up, and then you get to the range and find out that it doesn't fit you. Worse yet, you may take a loss having to resell it as a used gun. So it's important that when you go into a gun store, you focus on getting the right fit. And many gun stores will help you with this, other gun stores will not. They expect you to do your own homework. So we're trying to help with that. Anyway, um, we hope this answers most of your questions about getting a proper fit when you're going out to buy a new firearm. Um, if not, you can always ask us questions on the YouTube. We're more than happy to answer them. But we want to thank you all for joining us again on Shoot of the Series. My name's Ed Thorell from Firearms Education and Training. Y'all take care.